Oh, that's not straight. Oh, it is straight. That's not straight. That's the average thought process of people seeing me and Finn. <laughs> Today, I would like to talk about how to put together outfits, kind of. It's not like gonna be super intense because I'm not in my new house. I don't have a nice area to like show clothes and show examples, but I can show examples with photos. I wanna kind of help you put together outfits that complement you and help you out in your transition. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying I personally believe that trans flaws are not as much of a problem as people like to think that they are. I think that they are just human variants. My shoulders are bigger than my hips. It's just not something to really worry about. I know that dysphoria is all encompassing, but I just think that personally, it is a little bit safer to battle the brain thoughts rather than try to obliterate the body and make yourself feel bad. Anyway, first of all, you need to kind of find your problem areas. So the areas of your body that you dislike. I made a video talking about the two thirds rule. Two thirds of your outfit is kind of one piece and then one third is another piece. So if you can split your silhouette into that two thirds, one third, you will have an attractive outfit. The stage before that, before you can decide what you want to wear, you need to decide what you're trying to achieve if you're trans. If we're not just if you're trans, that was a misstep. Cis women do this too. This, this advice wouldn't exist if not for cis women. It's not just for trans women. Um, but anyway, this is a trans channel. Uh, I am so tired. It took me so long to get the puppy to sleep. It was like an hour before I even started the video. Blech. Obviously you have the whole bone thing, but more importantly is kind of the muscles and the fat that as a, you know, trans woman that's gone few through male puberty, you won't really have the same shape as a cis woman, but it's not the end of the world. It is something that you can change. Obviously, genetic variants, big thing, depends on your genetics. You could be curvier than a cis woman. It is human variation, but on average, you'll probably have less development around kind of, I'd say like, this area here and on the back of your butt i'm gonna show you my butt there will be less fat than with a cis woman and you can you can change this with clothing or with exercise strength training is huge i use it my butt has grown here is a before and after you can see back of my ass is just filling out slightly Hell yeah. finding problem areas my problem areas are my shoulders, they are wider than my hips. So I count that as a problem area. And the way that I handle this most of the time is to wear something flared at my hips. So I talked about this at TikTok on TikTok way back when I started my TikTok, but you know, you haven't seen that, it doesn't matter. The best way to appear more shapely, more curved, more defined is to flare your hips with something like a mini skirt, a lot of trans women wear. A skater skirt for that very reason. This is the first <laughs> thing that most of you ever bought. <laughs> or like a oversized pair of like joggers or trousers, jeans, something that kind of gives you more bulk. Uh, if you're gonna choose a mini skirt, which you probably will, make sure you wear it around. This area here, this is your waist now. Not here where these trousers are. This is your old waist. This is your new waist up here. So obviously this is kind of a big thing with trans women. This is like the main problem is like wanting your hips to be wider. So a lot, like I mentioned, a lot of trans women go for mini skirts, but you can have sufficient widening with jeans. You just kind of need to oversize your jeans, go for like a Y2K and 90s kind of vibe where they're baggy and they kind of give that form of like just bulky, they bulk it out. So for this example, you have found your problem area, which is your hips, and you have decided that a bulky joggers or skirt or whatever is your option. So you need to then move on to reducing shoulders. The best way to kind of make a juxtaposition between big bulky or wide hips and your torso 
is to wear something tight, like I have on now, like a tank top, a tight t-shirt, something form-fitting. And it kind of produces that balance you have. It makes this area look smaller and your lower half look bulkier. And then the shoulders. You can hide them or you can be a bad bitch and you can keep them out. Because if you you can balance your body so that, you know, your your skirt is flaring, your, your midi skirt, your, you know, large skirt, baby tiny trans woman skirt <laughs> that is very risky, it can balance out your body and you can just have your shoulders out and no one's gonna know anything or think anything. You look great, trust me. Or you can kind of cheat if you're feeling insecure and you can wear a hoodie. And then you put this hoodie or a jacket, a crop jacket. A crop jacket would be cute because it would match the mini skirt. But then this hides your shoulders, the bulkiness of the jacket kind of it, it, it removes the idea that your shoulders are creating the form and that it's just the jacket doing that. And if you wear a jacket uh, um, and it makes you a bit top heavy, that's what a jacket is supposed to do. And it kind of helps with confidence and helps with not feeling like you stand out. Alternatively, you could wear shapewear, either shapewear that pulls in your, your midsection so that you have more of like that hourglass shape, or you could wear shapewear that gives you kind of fake hips or fake boobs or any of that stuff. Do not feel bad about that because that is made for cis women. It's not made for you. They're made for cis women that are insecure. The whole female market is for insecurity and bettering yourself and it applies for trans women the same as cis women. The shapewear will be in most stores, stores that sell underwear. They will have like the hip forms or the boob forms or the butt forms. And that's the quickest way to feel safe in public. I think the hardest thing with that is to feel like you're cheating, but that's stupid. And safety is priority. I would say safety and then kind of figuring out your brain so you're not, you know, being as harsh on yourself about just natural features and then altering. I would not recommend a BBL, but you can do you. It is very dangerous. It's one of the most dangerous, like, cosmetic surgeries, which is a bit freaky. But, you know, if you... I'm not... I'm not your mum. Exercise, strength training, killer. It really does help. Losing weight, like exercising, cardio, being healthy, gives you, like, more of an inwards waist shape, especially if you've got your hormones in the female range for a long enough time. And then strength training, if there's that kind of myth that you'll become bulky or too big, that is not gonna happen. That is incredibly hard. You would have to try and become a bodybuilder. If you just do like standard, like, you know, decent strength training where you do like lower body, upper body, and then a full body day, you will just grow your muscles in a way that is uniform. And, you know, you're, you can have like a leg focus. I like to do more lower body exercises than upper and that, is, you know, adding muscles that weren't there. It's giving me shape that wasn't there before. And that has been a huge confidence boost. Targeting specific muscles, which are your, I can't remember what they're called because I'm not that smart, but the muscles on the sides of your body, the outside, not the inside. A lot of leg exercises target the inside of your hips, but you want the outside of your hips. And those are very specific exercises like hip abductions, and they really, really do help. Things to avoid specifically for the kind of hips problem area. You should avoid bodycon dresses, dresses that are very tight to you and they have no flair. They're just, you know, straight down. Um, those rely on your body providing the shape of the dress. And if you're not quite there yet, it's not going to make you feel very good. Um, so avoid things like that. Avoid tight jeans. You want to avoid things that kind of accentuate your shoulders. People would say that like tank tops accentuate your shoulders, but it really depends on the type and it depends on your hairstyle. There are a bunch of different things. You know, I think the best thing to do is to try clothes on and see what works for you. This is what I did. It's what I still do. I try certain styles of clothing on and I go, okay, I can wear that. I can wear the bodycon dress now, or I can wear this tank top. I can wear this tight t-shirt, or I can't wear that. There's a bunch of stuff that is just not for me. I think the best way to, to find a really good outfit for you is to go through your wardrobe, try stuff on and see what suits your body. And when you go shopping for clothing, try 
a variety of uh, styles. So tank top or t-shirt or, you know, button up shirt and try them in different sizes because a big oversized t-shirt is really nice, but a medium sized t-shirt doesn't suit me very well. It comes to a really weird stage on my body where it kind of, it doesn't fit the two thirds rule properly. It makes me look like a block, um, but a tight t-shirt can make me look really good. So I usually go for either really baggy or really form fitting because I, you know, I, I tried it on in the store and I saw like, oh, this is way nicer. And I think that you would be surprised. Like you, you can think you're a medium or a large or whatever. And you try the smaller one because you were like a little bit into your transition now, you haven't realized. And it fits you nicer. You, you, you know, your body is moving at a faster pace than your brain realizes. You'll have changes that you would even have noticed that you'll only really see when you start to explore more like feminine clothing or form fitting clothing or you know, just, just trying more stuff. Honestly, I've kind of rambled on about the one problem area this whole video, so I feel like I'm just gonna leave it at that. If there are other problem areas I should talk about, I feel so bad calling it a problem area because it's just, it's not. But I understand where it comes from. Um, if there are other areas like that that you feel that you would need help with, if there's enough of a buzz about it, then I will do a little video talking about other areas. Off the top of my head, I can't really think about anything. The, the most common problem is like, how do I make my hips bigger? How do I reduce my shoulders? Which hopefully I have helped with just a little bit. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, there will be more fashion stuff. In a few months when I move into the new house, it will be a focus. We'll be talking about my brand and like how it's building and how I'm getting all the samples and making it ready, blah, 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 the things I'm looking for. And I'll be trying to do more like long form fashion helpful videos like I started with TikTok, but I was gonna say more coherent, but they will probably be less coherent because I am not particularly very coherent. Love ya.